You probably heard all about Nokia phones, but what the company actually works on runs deeper than this. So, Nokia have sponsored this video, armed me up with a Nokia 9 PureView, and flown me all the way out to Finland to show you exactly what that is. All right, I've just landed in Finland, and at the Nokia Executive Experience Center, because just before we get to that massive unboxing, there's something I want to show you inside. At different points during the day, I'm going to use this Nokia 9 PureView to capture a photo in RAW. And because of how much data a RAW photo contains, I'll also show you my edited versions, which bring it out. There's a little entrance with a Nokia logo, but it's only when I stepped into the first main room that I had to physically stop and take it in. Oh, and of course, get that photo on the phone. This experience center kind of feels like a city in of itself. It's filled with tech demos, loads of hands-on stuff, but the main reason we're here is this. No, not VR table tennis primarily. There's an area dedicated to 5G because you might not have known, Nokia actually makes the only globally available 5G solution. So that means if a company wanted to provide 5G, then they would come to Nokia to build the cell towers and everything that goes with it. And one of the most underrated benefits of this 5G is latency. 5G has about a tenth of the latency of 4G, which means whatever you're doing through it can effectively happen in real time. And I can actually show you a couple of interesting real world examples of that two robotic arms trying to balance a ball. With 4G, you can flick the ball, and it would almost reach the end before the robot realized and responded, but with 5G, it was almost an instantaneous reaction. Finally, just before we headed off, I also tried scoring goals versus one goalkeeper with 4G levels of latency, and then one with 5G. And because of how much faster Mr. 5G could respond, you can imagine it was harder. All right, off we went. We were now headed to a Finnish forest for that pretty crazy unboxing experience. It's kind of amazing that within 30 minutes, we'd driven from the dense city of Helsinki to what felt a lot like the middle of nowhere. I met with the team that was helping me out today, and I got a hand lifting what must have been, I'm going to say, at least 15 kilos worth of packaging. It turns out there wasn't just one, not even two, but three parts to this. And so, the first one was pretty cryptic. Inside the crate was an absolutely enormous 32,000 mAh worth of battery. The second contained what can only be described as a super-sized stabilized camera, and this also has a really unusual quirk about it, which I'll come to in a minute. But I couldn't wait, we had to get inside the big one, and once inside, you're going to see a commercial-grade product, which means you can't just hop into a shop and buy one, but also that it's capable of doing stuff you might have never seen before. Welcome to one of the most forward-thinking drones you've ever seen. There's a controller here. It's actually only the backup controller, but still probably the most elaborate I've ever held. There are a couple of stands as well, made of real carbon fiber, and the thing itself is a bit of a monster, about half the size of me. So you might be thinking, I've seen tons of drones before. What is the big deal? Well, the product you're looking at right now is a specialized modular drone, and one of the big potential uses is for search and rescue missions. Oh yeah, and that's exactly what we're about to do, but just before I get to that, there's a couple of things I want to show you here. First of all, the entire frame, pretty much carbon fiber, so the body weighs almost nothing, especially compared to that battery pack that slides in on top. The drone has built-in sensors to be able to see where it's going and, you know, make sure it doesn't hit anything. On top of that, this camera attachment, the one that I showed you earlier, actually has two cameras. You've got one which can record in HD and has support for 30 times optical zoom, and the second one is actually an infrared thermal camera. So we set up a control center in a nearby building, and before we could do the full search and rescue, we decided to do a test flight. From a computer which has the right software, you can see the live feed coming from the drone's cameras one for the primary cam, and one for the thermal. Anyways, all I was tasked with doing here is running away. So the drone took off, and you can see the footage of it doing so right here. I waited for 20 seconds, and then bam, like something out of a low-budget Hollywood film, I sprinted away with the drone above. What I thought was pretty cool here is that this drone, and in fact Nokia's entire drone network, runs on its own high bandwidth broadband. Which means all this footage you're seeing right now is not just being recorded by the drone, but also saved onto a server online in real time. Action sequence over, so I headed back to the control center to check out some of the footage, and especially when I'm running through the cooler areas in the shade, you can start to see how the thermal camera comes into play when finding people. We also tried the 30 times zoom of the camera, and this is needed so that even if you're flying 100 meters above the ground, you can still see anyone who's lost or trapped. Now, that may sound like a really niche scenario, but thousands of people per year in Finland alone get lost like this. I was blown away by the estimates. 
So, you've seen a taste of the drone being controlled by humans, but the vision is actually that the entire thing will soon be automated. Introducing the base station, which protects, weatherproofs, and charges the drone. And when you add that into the future 5G connectivity, because they're 5G ready, you can probably start to see the bigger picture. This gimbal is only one attachment. You could have a loudspeaker that could broadcast important announcements. You could have a chemical sensor that could scan for dangerous things in the air, or it could even just have a hook that allow it to pick up packages from one location and drop them to another. This is not a drone for fun. This is an important piece of the puzzle when we talk about our smart cities of the future. So, just before the search and rescue, we headed into Nokia's training center nearby for some lunch, and as far as training centers go, I'm not bad at all. I just took the phone with me, no camera, and I got a few shots of the inside, as well as my edited versions, which really bring out the best possible dynamic range. It was go time, so two members of the team volunteered to sprint into the forest and essentially try to get lost. We sent up a drone from our end and used the software to set up an automatic patrol of the entire forest. And you can see on this not just the exact path it's going to follow, but also where it is at any point in time. You can also draw in no-fly zones, for example if you had a building above which you didn't want the drone to go. We actually sent up two drones, and the job of one of them was just to record footage of the other, and it looks pretty good. You can also see from the thermal camera footage how exposed areas of the ground have absorbed much more of the sun's heat than the trees or covered areas below them. It took about 15 minutes before the guys popped into view, and this whole thing was a pretty cool example of how having these two images side by side can actually capture more. You see the same thing from two different perspectives, in a sense. To round this whole thing off, we found a beautiful pier and used this as an opportunity to take one last photo on that Nokia 9 pure view. The light behind me was pretty intense, and so it wasn't a surprise that it basically came out as a silhouette. But this is probably the greatest of the transformations in terms of what I was able to bring out with a quick edit. And that's a wrap. To find out more about the Nokia drone network or their 5G plans, I'm going to drop some links in the description below. There's also a video that goes into it even more. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.